After weeks of anticipation, nothing could have fully prepared me for the jaw-dropping splendor surrounding us. For those of you with a hunger for adrenaline and a love of the great outdoors, this is a place you have to see to believe. From canyoneering and cliff jumping to night fishing under a starlit sky. From wake surfing in the shadows of towering 600 foot tall cliffs to racing through narrow slot canyons on a sea view. Join us in this episode to see why Lake Powell offers the planet's ultimate houseboating adventure grounds. From the bayou to the Rocky Mountains, and the depths of the Pacific to the sandbars of New England, this is Boat Trader's Stomping Grounds. From small bass boats to giant offshore titans and everything in between, boaters across America show us why they love their boat and exactly what makes it the perfect vessel for their neck of the woods. In this episode, we're heading to the heart of the American Southwest to embark on a thrilling adventure at one of the nation's greatest inland boating regions. Our crew will be exploring both land and water on a joint excursion with Cruise America. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan and welcome back to another episode of Stomping Grounds. I'm standing here in the desert outside Tucson, Arizona, an unlikely place to start a boating trip. However, that's where our story begins today as we head north towards Phoenix. We're gonna meet up with Cruise America and we're gonna drive three motorhomes up to Lake Powell. It's one of the most spectacular places in the country and it offers one of the greatest boating adventures that you can go on. Very excited for this once in a lifetime opportunity. In episode 10, we explored boating life in Austin, Texas, before journeying across West Texas and New Mexico, headed towards Arizona. We got a couple of dust devils popping out. Right? West Texas has a lot of dust devils. The big one right in front of the mountains off to our left. That's a good one. It's crazy. For those just tuning in, Scott and I, along with the Boat Trader crew, have been crisscrossing the country the past two years on a mission to meet local boaters, hear their tales, and witness their home waters firsthand. Of course, sometimes we enjoy a little time on land, too. This is the first time that Scott has ever seen saguaro in the wild like this. Now he's seen a bunch of giant saguaro. Scott, you've been cacti christened. Normally we're in my vintage Mustang, nicknamed Penny Lane, but she's in the shop this time, so we made our way over to Tucson in a rental car to set up home base for a few days and prep and plan for the adventure ahead. We made our temporary headquarters at the historic Hotel Congress in the heart of the city. Our hotel room here has a great view of Tucson here. Feeder across the street. Hung out the ghosts last night. Yes, hotel probably does have ghosts. Listed on the National Register of Historic Places, Hotel Congress is a cultural landmark that was built in 1919 and is rumored to be one of the most haunted buildings in the country. Owners say frightened guests often run out of their rooms at night after ghostly encounters. This journey all began when I met Phoenician Brandon Cook at a hotel in Tucson during our travels. Kind of a funny story, met in a hot tub. What you do for a living had some synergy with what we do. Brandon runs an agency that works with Cruise America, loves our show, and invited us to do an episode together on Lake Powell. I wanted to introduce some people to what I feel is the best boating experience in the Southwest. The ultimate way to experience Lake Powell is on a houseboat, and I think the best way to experience a lot of America is in a motorhome. We had a lot of phone calls back and forth. Great houseboat adventures take a ton of coordination. You gotta figure out how to get everybody there, where the meeting point is. There's quite a bit of planning that goes into it. A lot of gear, tent camping, fishing, water sports. Our goal was to document everything and show others how to do the trip too. Limited cell phone service. Really need to have old school maps. Brandon's buddy Bo grew up boating on Lake Powell. In the 70s, you'd get a houseboat with your parents' friends and take the kids and take off for a week. He was going to help show us the lake and answer a lot of common houseboating questions. Your parents are young and didn't have a lot of money, but you get three families together and pull the cash or in a houseboat, take your ski boat up there and spend a week. You never get bored. Adventure seekers Lauren and Lindsay soon joined our group, along with Grace, a local boater who grew up boating around Utah. Grew up in Utah, went to high school, college, both in Utah. Like Powell's a whole different experience. I've come a couple times with my friends and stuff. It's a big trip. 
There's nothing like it. It's just like moving in with a bunch of people for like a week or something. We drove up to Phoenix to pick up the motorhomes at Cruise America and kick off the week. We all met at Cruise America, our corporate headquarters in Mesa, Arizona. All the crew kind of came together. We kind of knew different people, so it was fun. We spent a little time there getting oriented with the vehicles and then just took off from there. The RVing lifestyle mirrors the boat cruising lifestyle in that you have a mobile home base to explore from. Getting to the lake is part of the battle. Walmart runs and Costco runs. They have enough storage so that you don't need to trailer anything. I wanted the opportunity for us to be able to stop in Sedona, stop in Flagstaff, stop at Antelope Canyon. Too pretty, we had to stop. Yes. We made a bunch of excursions along the way to the lake to check out all the amazing geological formations and the many dramatic slot canyons that the area is known for. It was great to have our own amenities along with us the whole way. Be able to pull off the side of the road anywhere and have the refrigerator, the hot shower, and the bed. 30-foot RVs could sleep three to four of us each, and they're also dog friendly. It's not necessarily a destination, as you know. It's the journey that can be just as much fun or more. We finally arrived to the lake after sunset and set up camp on the shore. Arrived. Everybody say hi. Hey, hey. All right. In the morning, we got our first views of the stunning landscape. Normally, the water level is actually all the way up there. The water's low. There is some concern, but it's been rising for the last six weeks with the snow melt up on the Colorado Plateau. The lake was created in 1963 when the Glen Canyon Dam was completed along the Colorado River, just east of the Grand Canyon. For the next 17 years, the surrounding canyons filled to an eventual high water level, forming a massive body of water over 186 miles long and 25 miles wide. The Glen Canyon Dam is a commanding 710 feet tall and stretches nearly 1,600 feet across. Hydroelectric power is produced by the dam's eight generators in order to provide energy and drinking water for millions of people. The fragility of this vital water reserve underscores the critical nature of our shared water resources. Brandon's dog, Gigi, rounded out our group as the eighth member. We huddled up and made a game plan, and we're finally ready to hit the water. Ready, Grace? We drove the three RVs over to Antelope Point Marina, our jump-off point, and loaded everything onto three cars. Food, first aid kit, and enough drinking water for a week. Staying hydrated at Powell is crucial, and water tanks on houseboat rentals aren't for drinking, so it's safe to bring about a gallon of drinking water per person per day. Okay. You can feel the excitement in the air as we drove to the docks. Everyone's stoked to hit the water. This vast staging area is a launch pad for adventure, and it feels a little like you're getting ready to be sent into outer space. Well, there are many prominent houseboating regions across America, Powell really stands out as the pinnacle with houseboats stretching as far as you can see, many of which are bought and sold on Boat Trader. The ultimate destination for houseboating in America. Lake Powell has nearly 2,000 miles of shoreline that cuts through dramatic rock formations and connects over 90 finger canyons, forming a vast recreational boating area. Situated amongst southern Utah's spectacular red rock canyons, sandstone walls, and desert landscapes, it is one of the most scenic lakes in the country and provides a playground like no place else on Earth. It's basically the Grand Canyon filled with water. You could come here a thousand times and never see the same place twice. Located on the ancestral homeland of 11 associated tribes, the canyon was formed by millions of years of gradual erosion and has been inhabited by Native Americans for thousands of years. Tribes in the area include the Pueblo peoples, the Navajo, the Hopi, and the Havasupai, among others. For tribes here, water is life, and the Colorado River is sacred. Natives were traditionally excellent swimmers, anglers, and boaters who utilized reed rafts made from buoyant plants native to the region, hide boats or bull boats made from hides stretched over wooden frames, as well as dugout canoes, keel boats, and flat boats. In 1992, a coalition of tribes formed the Ten Tribes Partnership with a united vision to protect the cultural and ecological resources that serve as the primary water source for 40 million people. 
right, so what's our float plan here? Last night we camped all the way over here. Mm -hmm. Drove over here this morning. We're about to get on the houseboat and we're gonna motor. Mm -hmm. We're gonna come out to the big Padre Bay. To have your chase boat go out first and make sure you can find a place yep. to beach. Yep. All right, so we just had instructions on the deck boat and the houseboat. You think we're ready to hit the water? I think you're ready to have a lot of fun. Me too. Just leaving Antelope Point Marina. So we got a 26 foot deck boat and a 60 foot houseboat. Our houseboat was an aluminum hull double decker built by Fun Country and powered by twin 200 horsepower outboards. Plan is to head 30 miles up into the lake. We've got firewood, we've got coolers, we've got food, blankets. We've got about 400 gallons of fresh water on board. We've got about 265 gallons of fuel aboard. Uh, we're cruising at about five, six knots right now. Fuel burn is another big consideration. You don't want to run out of gas out there or get stranded. Our goal was to keep the boat around 3,000 RPMs for an average burn rate of around 10 to 12 gallons per hour at around six knots. It's quite a bit of work to get up here, but once you're here, once you hit the water, the pace, your worries, it's just your light switch turns off. You can't really describe it. I don't know how to describe it. It looks prehistoric, almost like a different world. It's like you're on Mars just doesn't look like this is real. When you first leave Antelope Point Marina, there are a lot of houseboats around, all heading up the canyons to find a place to anchor. But as you get deeper and deeper into the lake, they begin to fall away, and you start to find yourself on your own more and more. You can go for miles and see something different around every corner. It's really cool. Our quest to document this trip, of course, includes trying to find the best places on the lake to visit. You have your kitchen, you have, you have everything you need. I love cooking and the other girls love cooking too. First meal aboard. Okay. Tuna melts, garden salad. Meals on houseboats become social events and everyone kind of gets on the same eating schedule. Key to any houseboat, you gotta have a really nice galley. This boat has a full-size refrigerator, full-size stove and oven range top, four burners, you got your microwave. We also cooked on the two outdoor grills a lot. These are the heads on board. The bathrooms are definitely smaller than preferred. Make sure you have two heads on board. There's one shower. I was a bit worried there could be some controversy sharing one shower. It's okay. It works. Limited water means fast military showers and careful conservation. Taking a look at the living space here, this is one of the queen beds. You have your double bunk here. Very comfortable. Here's the rear aft stateroom, queen size mattress as well. The main salon and top deck were also comfortable places to sleep. You just go to the top deck, just sleep under the stars. After a few hours, we arrived to Padre Bay, the largest open water expanse on Lake Powell. That's where we stayed for a couple nights. Beaching a boat at Lake Powell can be a bit tricky. You have to find a soft, sandy beach and ease the boat gently onto the shore and hold it in place with the throttles while you get your anchors set. Lake Powell is a little different when it comes to anchoring because it can get real windy and these are gigantic sails. So you got to make sure that wind doesn't blow you on the beach. So it's a little difficult. The idea is you have two anchors in front that keeps you on the beach and then you want stern anchored 45 degrees and that keeps the wind from blowing you. The wind can get up to like 90 miles an hour so ideally you want to dig a deep hole and throw that anchor in there. All right guys so we found our anchor spot for the first night in a nook on the north side of Padre Bay. There's the cookie jar rock formation right above us. At an elevation of over 4,300 feet the impressive cookie jar butte towers over Padre Bay and dominates the surrounding landscape. Once anchored, it's time to kick back, relax, and explore. And let me tell you, man, getting a houseboat with a water slide is key. <laughs> You'll definitely want to bring along water toys for times like these. Fishing rods, paddle boards, floats and tubes. There's a lot of activities, rafting and tubing, and paddle boarding, wakeboarding, wake surfing. One of the great things about Lake Powell is that every place you anchor offers a new area to hike around and explore, with new views, canyons, swimming holes, cliffs, and caves to discover. 
A herd of curious desert bighorn sheep visited us. Yeah. They're all staring at me. Looking at you like you know them. As the day began to wane, we embarked on what became a nightly tradition, a group sunset cruise. The water at night looks like you're gliding over the water, like flying over almost. Sunsets at Lake Powell are a spectacle of vibrant colors and dancing shadows, where light weaves through the rugged sandstone rocks and waning rays cast a golden spell over the mirrored lake. There's never a bad sunset. Of course, we'd also try to catch ourselves dinner on these trips. This is the witching hour. Yeah. yeah. Lake Powell has great fishing. You can fish all different ways, fly rod, top water, down deep. Great eating fish, there's striped bass, crappie, and walleye, which are good eating, um, and bass, large and smallmouth, which are fun to catch. And there's also catfish. The lake's pretty deep, so you can bottom fish, um, depending on what time of year. We caught walleye, we caught smallmouth bass, there's huge bluegill, and all sorts of stuff. This is the good eating size walleye. Thank you. You're uh, for what, what you're giving us, but uh, yeah, whole night fishing. Nice. Walleye. Nice. On the crankbait. What better feeling than enjoying a day outdoors, catching your own dinner, and preparing it back at your boat? How do you get through this fine and not the belly? The belly has all the organs, and you don't want to touch them. <laughs> it's it's actually pretty, for that size of fish, it's a Yeah, it's a pretty good flight. Dude, yeah. it's 35 a pound right now. The next morning, we organized a rendezvous with a local wake boat owner named Tom. Top Chef Houseboat Edition. Mmm. <laughs> We all got ready to go and hopped on the deck boat. Here we are on our 26 foot tender deck boat. I'm still trying to learn the difference between a mandarin, a tangerine, and what are the other ones? A clementine. When you don't have phone service, you realize how many little things you Google throughout the day. Anyways, we're gonna go meet up with Tom and do some wake surfing on the lake here. Everybody's pumped, let's do it. Oh, this is so glassed out. Still trying to, still trying to figure out the difference here. Tangela's my best friend. It's all ball bearings these days. Hey, that's a Fletch reference, yeah, man. <laughs> Tom works with Centurion Boats, who we'd recently filmed with at the World Wake Surfing Championship, and I asked him if he would show us the best wake surfing spot on the lake. He said to meet him in Last Chance Bay. Having a wakeboard boat out here with a houseboat is the way to do it. We had some weather moving in, but Last Chance tends to stay calmer than other parts of the lake in high winds. Tom came out and met us with a 23-foot Centurion. We've been doing this, coming to PAL for about 17 years. Tom and his wife run a wake surfing company here in Utah called TK Watersport. I got into boating because of my wife. She taught me how to wakeboard and created a monster. It's a family-run business, and he brought his daughter, Danny, along. T is for Tom, K is for Katie. We're about ready to jump on board and do some wake surfing. We have about a two-hour window where it's going to look like this. All right, everyone. I want to board. <laughs> We've taught all levels, put a lot of wake surf camps on, wakeboarding camps, drive for all the professional riders, the World Wake Surf Championship. Really nice boat, and he was a professional, giving us pointers. Feet placement is going to help you. Push down on your heels a little bit. Okay, see how that does that? Put your arms straight, let them go inside your knees. See what happens? See how yeah. you're coming forward? That's what you want to okay. do. Some of us surfed goofy or right foot forward and others regular. And Tom's boat could switch ballast from side to side quickly. This is a Centurion FI-23. Centurion has been the top of the leader for surf boats. Their flagship boat is an RI-237, but we like one a little bit in the middle. It surfs as good as any of the boats. We had a couple newbies and a couple pros, so it's nice to see somebody learn how to do it. It's also fun to watch people who knew what they were doing get out there. The cool thing about Lake Powell, you got this western backdrop. The water gets up to 80 degrees. 
The FI-23 has over 5,200 pounds of ballast to create perfect waves. This is last chance all the way down, and this stays untouched for quite a while. It's a bucket list item for wake surfers around the world to come surf on Last Chance Bay beneath these towering cliffs. I've gone wake surfing a couple times. Tom could easily adjust the waves for all riding levels on his touch screen. I was able to stay up for a while. It was very fun. Loved it. Everyone got a turn before the wind started to really pick up and the water got choppy. Scott's a lifelong surfer and, as expected, shredded it up just before we had to head back to the houseboat where Bo was keeping watch. I've just always chosen to be happy and to be optimistic. My whole life's like that. I'm Tom and this is my stomping grounds and my world. Back at the boat, it was time for cocktails and hors d'oeuvres. We laid out a big spread on the top deck, and Lindsay made us some great muddled watermelon drinks. It's an old boating superstition that it's bad luck to have a boat with no name. So it's happy hour here aboard boat 442, but we think we need, need to name it something else, right? So we decided to name the boat together. Any ideas? Mine's Cookie Monster, because we're in front of the cookie jar. I like Cookie Monster. I think we're like, all like people coming from like different parts of the world. Okay. So I expect you to name it like something about coming together. I was thinking like on the gas. On the gas. Oh, yeah, well, like that's the fun part of last Running night. on empty. Yeah. Oh. Running on empty. Running on full. Some, Running something on of that full. nature felt right to me, but that's I'm open cute. to... Uh, full steam ahead. <laughs> it could be called chip yeah. ship. One thing that came to mind, everybody brought something different to the table. We just were, call it muddled. While we were out... <laughs> <laughs> muddled up. Muddled up. Yes! <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> muddled up. Muddled up. Yeah. We decided that the boat's name was like Muddled it. Up. about the group coming together? And it became the name of our right. crew, too. So there we have it. We are Muddled Up. There were some great muddled cocktails coming together. Muddle up, it just worked out all, all the way around. Day three, some of us woke up early and went fishing. Grace came up here and is doing yoga, so it's a great spot in these canyons. A little extra challenge with the yoga positions is the wind. We actually woke up this morning and the boat shifted about 45 degree angle. Hey Gigi, come here. Well, breakfast up here on the upper deck. <laughs> you guys ready to go exploring? We're gonna do a move today, find another spectacular spot. We got the boats ready to roll. Decided to pack up and move further up the lake. Put at an angle right behind the pectoral there. Yes. Yep. And now on your side of the spine, and just gently. How far do I want to go down? Just all the way down. And now you'll see where it got. Good job. And that, my Perfect. friends, is a walleye. Freshwater walleye run out of Lake Powell. Brandon and Bo hopped on and off the deck boat all day to scout up ahead and radio back what they found. The houseboat's your home base. The right way to do it is to have a ski boat, a jet ski, Zodiac, or deck boat like we have. The wave runners and the jet skis are the most nimble and the fastest. We synced up with local outdoor enthusiast, canyoneer, and YouTuber Jerry and his wife Tina, who are running a pair of Sea Dew Fish Pros. They showed us some of the narrow canyons that they explore here. They can also get back in pretty tight nooks and crannies. I think we're about to go into Labyrinth Canyon. That's, that's the ultimate way to sentinel out. Sea Dew Fish Pros are an ideal personal watercraft for exploring the narrow canyons of Lake Powell. They're 12 feet long and 4 feet wide with plenty of storage and very maneuverable. The Trophy Edition is powered by a 170 horsepower engine giving them a top speed of around 60 miles an hour. These two love to backpack, hike, and explore the canyons of the Southwest together. And they publish their adventures on his YouTube channel, Jerry Arizona. Oh my god, this is amazing. Oh yeah! <laughs> Canyon split off, you can go left, you can go right. We went right. That was wrong. Labyrinth Canyon is renowned for its narrow, secluded, and dramatic winding waterways that carve their way through distinctive red rock cliffs in a captivating maze. Ooh, it's getting tight. Yeah, that's as far as we're getting. One of the cooler canyons you can explore. If 
finding the sandy beaches is part of the part of the experience and adventure. Cliff jumping is a favorite thing to do around here. There's infinite places you can do it. Brandon came back and told us he found a great spot for some cliff jumping, so we all hopped on the deck. All right, here's the cliff jumping gang. We're gonna take the anchor up here and we're gonna drop it down just to make sure we've got 20, 30 feet. Cliff jumping is all about proper scouting ahead of time. Checking the depth in multiple places using measured anchor road. We've got at least 20 feet already, huh? To make sure you have enough water to safely jump. We're about to jump. Oh my god. You ready? Yeah. Ready? Wow. One, two, three. Y'all good? <laughs> she shouldn't jump that way. Ooh, that was good. Grace overcame a fear and leaped into a Powell rite of passage. Nice. Oh! Yeah! We all got our adrenaline rush and headed back to the mothership to continue our search for a new anchorage. Copy. This cove looks a little bit shallow, so they're going to check the first one that we came into in this canyon. As the water level changes year to year, the beach you had last year might not be there. In the serene embrace of Rock Creek Bay, we discovered an ideal anchorage for the night with our own canyon all to ourselves. A little bit of manual labor before we get to enjoy the evening. It suggests a six foot deep hole. We're not doing a six foot deep hole. <laughs> this is like really heavy mud, so. <laughs> As the day began to fade and the sun gradually dipped below the red cliffs, we gathered together for one last group hike around the enchanted cove that we'd discovered. Every time I'm here, I say to myself, why don't I come more? It's magic. What had begun as a gathering of relative strangers had blossomed into friendships bound together by a shared experience here. It's a paradise for people in the Southwest. Morning, evenings, the stars, the moonlight, everywhere you look, everywhere you go. It's kind of breathtaking wherever you look. You can't have more fun. It was time for one more evening cruise. Just being in nature helps you just see what's real and like what's important and what's authentic. One more try at catching dinner from the depths of the lake. I got something playing in my We knew these were our final hours in this mystical place, and we all made the best of them. For anybody who's been here, or anybody that will come, you're going to know what we're talking about. There's nothing like it. But a houseboat adventure is as much about the people you're with as the place. We gathered firewood and huddled around a crackling campfire, sharing some mores and telling stories by the flickering glow. To come together and meet new people and mix our lives and get to know each other, it's beautiful. Lake Powell represents the heart of American boating, offering the opportunity to roam freely across land and water while treasuring our precious resources together. When you don't know everyone and you get on a boat, it's hit and miss, this was a good one. The crew that you get means everything. Great, great, great trip. Well, my basic philosophy is you can't take it with you, so you might as well have fun now. <laughs> I'm Brandon, and this is my stomping grounds. I'm Grace, and this is my stomping grounds. All right, everyone, after a spectacular few days on Lake Powell, we're back here on land. I'm standing overlooking the iconic Horseshoe Bend. Don't forget, if you've got a cool boating story you want us to come check out, send us a message, follow us on Instagram, social media, and maybe we'll come to your neck of the woods next time. This is Ryan McVinney with Boat Trader, and we'll see you on a future episode. What's your stomping grounds? Follow us at youtube.com slash boat trader or on Instagram and Facebook to share your boating stories for a chance to be featured. Who knows? Maybe we'll come to your neighborhood next. This is Boat Trader Stomping Grounds.